when bad things happen in life, you have a couple of choices. You can either roll over and play dead, or you can roll up your sleeves and get busy. Well, I go back to the morning of day one, looking out of the Atlantic Ocean, and I'm thinking, I'm not an athlete. I'm just a regular dad, and what am I doing here? I don't think I really understood at the beginning what I was doing, uh, but I wanted to do something. I didn't really know how tough it was going to be. With an extra spring in their step, John and Jesse Davidson began the culmination of a four-month odyssey of love and devotion. The journey began on May 20th, 1995. John pushed Jesse across the province to raise money for gene research. His journey will help researchers get closer to their finish line, a cure. When your child is diagnosed with something which is definitely life-threatening, uh, you are totally unprepared. It's not something you ever go through life saying, gee, how will I react when this happens, if this ever happens? You never expect it to happen. And when it does, your world just absolutely flips upside down. You ask, um, why us? And you blame yourself and you get angry. I think when Jesse was diagnosed, it took us a while to come to terms with everything. And then we realized that research was where we wanted to go. I didn't know much about science, but I knew enough to understand that if it doesn't get funded, it doesn't happen. And I knew that um, all the car washes and bake sales in the world weren't going to get us there. Doing a great job, and I just sort of keep on going because we know we're, we're going to get there and we're going to do something good for people. Jesse's journey lasted four months and covered 3,339 kilometers. To date, they've raised $1.2 million. Well, we're happy to be here. We know that we've come a long way and told a lot of people what we're doing. Nice work, buddy. Thanks. I love you. Yeah. We raised quite a bit of money then, which we gave to research, and then the cupboard was bare, and I thought, well, that wasn't very smart. Why didn't we build something that would fund research all the time? I've made a commitment across Canada, taking 10 million steps to raise $10 million to create the Jesse Davidson Endowment Fund, which will provide a million dollars in research money every year, forever. And that is a lasting tribute to a very courageous youngster. We had big dreams and big goals that we set for ourselves. When you take on a project where you're going to walk across the country, I can remember thinking, oh my goodness, do we have a job ahead of us. The morning that we started the walk across Canada, I was 52 years old, and I remember standing on the shore at Kitty Vitty, Newfoundland, just outside of St. John's, and I'm looking out at the Atlantic Ocean and thinking to myself, what am I doing here? I really wondered what I had dragged all these people into. But I really knew that the dedication of the people that were brought together as part of this team were amazing, and our goal was to find a cure. I didn't know if I could do it, but I knew I could do the first day, and that's all that mattered. And I just took it one day at a time, and we just moved on. So if you take things in small bites, it's amazing what you can accomplish. It was exciting, and uh, there was a buzz. We were anticipating uh, groups of individuals waiting for us in the next town. All those people, so many, many people, so many, many good people who came forward. I think about them all the time. Much like myself, they didn't have any medical knowledge they could bring to the table. They just saw a story about a dad and his son. That's it, 7,000 kilometers. Right here? Right here. Hey, I'm a... Great. <laughs> so just uh, in terms of thousands, one more to go. So maybe it's doable after all. Six time zones is uh, a bit of a strange thing to want to walk across, but it's what Canadians do when we want to do something, I guess. <laughs> 
Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a genetically based disorder, a disorder that affects boys and causes a gradual decline in all their muscle functions throughout the body. So not just arm and leg movement, but also heart and lungs. Over time, the muscle cell breaks down and ultimately the muscle becomes weak and it's replaced with fat and scar tissue. Over time, the boys become weaker. It doesn't end well. The kids um, who are affected by this have a gradual decline in their muscle function, usually between the ages of 10 and, and 15 or 16 years. They lose the ability to walk, and so they're then in a wheelchair. After that, there's decline in in the ability to use the arms and so you know your functions your manual functions such as feeding yourself dressing yourself gradually decline and it is a life-limiting condition most young men with duchenne would pass away between the ages of, of 22 and 27 years of age The boys were diagnosed through a teacher at Caleb's school. She noticed that uh, in comparison with the other children that he was sometimes a little slower on stairs and suggested that we see a pediatrician. After the blood work came back, the CK levels were high, which sometimes indicates muscular dystrophy. So we were then sent for some genetic testing, uh, which then came back positive for both boys and for myself to be a carrier. It was one of those shockers. What is muscular dystrophy is the first question and realize that this isn't really the path that we thought we were going down. At first it's the honeymoon phase. So there's not a whole lot of extra needs or anything. Regular boys, walking, playing, doing the things other kids are doing. And slowly, as time progresses, they lose their, their abilities to do those things. And it was something really hard. Caleb has lost the ability to walk. He needs some help with some of his daily tasks. Liam is uh, slowly losing his abilities to, to walk. They need uh, scooters to help them get around and play with their friends and keep up with their friends. Having two boys with special needs in the house uh, is sometimes a little more stressful than maybe a regular house. With a two-story home, we've got a, a lot of stairs. So we've had to do numerous modifications to our house. We have a stair lift, we have a porch lift, we have ramps in the backyard to get in up on the deck. Our daily routine for treatment uh, consists of stretches and supplements. Both boys get about 45 minutes to an hour a day. There's also appointments in and around for all sorts of different things, uh, respiratology, checking the spine, uh, their orthotics for their, their legs and, and keeping the range of motion. And then we also see kids' ability and uh, have a great uh, physiotherapist there to make sure that we have the best care and we're, we're providing the best care for our children. Both of them are active in drumming and uh, they both like to play video games like all kids and we like to get outside and go for walks and enjoy a lot of the, the things that regular families do, except for our family has to do things a little different. Duchenne is such a brutal disease um, that takes away from these kids' lives and so, I think there's a, an urgent and huge need for new therapies for Duchenne. We're developing stat inhibitors, and stat inhibitors are small molecules which bind to the protein and kill its function. And as a result of killing its function, the disease cells die. And we're hoping to apply the same principles to Duchenne. Well, Max is my seven-year-old son. Max has got a great imagination. He's full of energy. It's hard to slow him down. We'd taken Max to a series of doctors because he seemed to be stumbling a little bit and a little bit unsteady on his feet, but he's our first child and you know, I guess we just thought that's how people learn to walk. And I remember in that doctor's office, the doctor kind of almost casually saying, oh, it might be you know, muscular dystrophy. Don't Google it. 
When we found out Max was diagnosed with uh, Duchenne, I decided early on that uh, we were gonna fight this. To see what Duchenne is doing to Max is, you know, it's sad. The future does, you know, scare me. I see, you know, what every other boy that's had Duchenne, I know what's happened to them. To be honest, I think what's happening right now with Patrick is the first time I've kind of let myself be a little bit excited. A successful result for us would be to see a restoration of muscle cell regeneration. And to me, I think Max is a representation of so many young kids in the world that have to deal with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Max, to me, is a representation of hope. I was diagnosed when I was two years old. Just walking and running. I get tired pretty fast. I'm a bit slower. Just going up and down stairs is even a struggle for me. It's tough to have it as well because you can't really do as much stuff as your friends can. It's getting a bit worse, but over the past few years I've been in like drug trials. Those have really helped me. This particular medication he's on, Drisopersin, is a genetically based therapy. It works to help correct one of the steps in the processing of the genetic material. And theoretically, it could be a very dramatic improvement and convert it to a more mild form of muscular dystrophy. I think I'm doing pretty well myself as I'm still like able to walk, which is pretty impressive for Duchenne at this age. To have the strength he does is very encouraging. And so for Eric, the clinical trial program has been, you know, a huge success. If we can really build on what we've learned, then I think we will move the yardstick closer. CRISPR is probably one of the most exciting scientific discoveries. I often use the term, it's like gene surgery. It's a system to cut out pieces of DNA anywhere in the genome and then use this cutting mechanism for therapeutic purposes to pretty much fix and repair genetic mutations. And I can tell you, 15 years ago, we were always saying gene therapy and muscular dystrophy, it's never gonna happen. Today, there are about four clinical trials to commence for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And we obviously need only one of them to work, but if they do, then we may finally have that game-changing breakthrough that we all have been waiting for. You don't give up because it's not an option. And I, uh, I think that we can do this. I'm certain that we can do this if we, if we try hard enough. So if we're not able to be in time for some people today, then I want to make sure that we're in time for that person who's diagnosed today, we're gonna to be there for him. We're very fortunate because Aiden, uh, when they diagnosed him, they said to us, by age 10, he's gonna be in an electric wheelchair. So I'm in sort of a unique situation where, while well, I'm still walking and I have a car I can drive, I have a license. Living with Duchenne, it's difficult. It limits what I have, what I can do, but at the same time, you know, I don't let it stop me. I just do it. And that's always been his way of doing things. He always finds a way around every single obstacle. You gotta work with what you're given. You almost ask yourself, what did I do to end up in this situation? Well, I mean, the answer is you didn't do anything. You know, living with your change doesn't look bright, but that's only because of your perspective. I like to just do what I can, go with the flow and see what happens. We have a disease that I think is kind of on the run, and I think there's a chance that we'll see it erased in my lifetime. We're absolutely committed. We've got a lot more to do. At this point right now, there is no treatment and there is no cure. Without research, we actually have no hope. Jesse's journey does two things. One, it provides families with hope, and in a monetary sense, it provides the research community with the dollars they need to get the job done. Raising money for research is our number one goal. I'm the founder of Max's Big Ride, which is a cargo bike journey that uh, I undertake with my son, Max, each year between Ottawa and Hamilton to raise money and awareness for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. A couple of years ago, Bob Facca decided that he wanted to walk from Quebec City to Winnipeg. 
you know, to be doing that kind of a thing for your grandson. You can tell it just comes from the heart. He raised a ton of money for muscular dystrophy research and uh, we love him. People are forever asking, how much did that event raise? How much, how much did you make? No one asks, what did you do with it? We decided to partner with Jesse's Journey because it is the only foundation in Canada that donates 100% to research. The more money we can get towards research, the more that can happen. It provides hope to families like myself. Originally, when I first started out in this, I thought, how can I possibly raise enough money to make a difference? But it can. A $10 donation can be significant. Certainly, there's times where we need to help people, and sometimes there's time when we need help from others. So I'm sure it's kind of a bit of a sharing where you're, you're giving to Jesse's journey to help others, but in return, you might at some point help someone you know or yourself. Sometimes you have a really good idea, but you simply don't have the resources. And if you had this one more person that could help you work on this idea, that would be so wonderful. The reality is, you know, a drug just doesn't jump out of the lab and, and into a person. There's lots of steps along the way. It's a very expensive, labor-intensive and time-intensive endeavor. Jesse's journey has been a critical player in neuromuscular research in Canada. All that we have accomplished so far is just the beginning. It's really just given us the, the credibility that we need in order to take those next steps and that's to get bigger, do a bigger job, do a better job, do it right, take all the knowledge that we've assembled so far and uh, become a major funder of research in Duchenne muscular dystrophy. We're just interested in putting ourselves out of business. Talking to families about this diagnosis currently versus, you know, a couple of decades ago is, it, it, it's a massive difference. The dream is to take something that is that debilitating and make it manageable, make it something curable, make it something that, you know, my children one day don't have to worry about. We haven't really gotten to the point that one of these potential game-changing therapies has translated into true success. But it's like almost there. Jesse's journey is all about hope. Do you have a tomorrow to look forward to? Instead of uh, this fear that you just don't know when your loved one is going to be uh, snatched away. You know, hope, it, it gives people the fight to, the fight to, the will to live, the will to keep going, keep pushing. They're working on it. And, you know, one day we might have that cure. Well, the ultimate dream would be that Duchenne doesn't exist anymore. My hope is that we can at least stunt it so it stops and I can have my boys. Kind of funny that somebody who didn't walk left such a big pair of shoes to fill. The hope that he gave boys who are like him, for a lot of Duchenne families, maybe at night when you put your head on the pillow, that's really all you have. The idea of hope, it, it allows you to think, I have a chance.